Hey guys, this is Savannah from earthandwater.co and we are on our last podcast episode of that are exploring the Celestine Prophecy Insights. This is the ninth one, which is kind of a crazy one, but like crazy in all the good ways, I suppose, you know. Again, this contains spoilers, so if you don't like that sort of thing, skedaddle now or forever hold your peace. So this one's super fun. It creates a picture for us um, of the future and what is to come. It says that as time goes on, we will learn to, we will learn more and more about this energy that has been with us this entire time, just operating underneath the skirts of our awareness. And now that we're aware of it, we will learn more and more and more and more and more and more about it and how to manipulate it and harness it and all of the fun stuff on how to interact with it to create a new world for us all and how that in doing all of this we will also become more compassionate more generous more community driven and less of the it's more uh, it's the one for all and all for one type of thing we'll actually start to embody that and create a better world for all of us and some of these concepts we've been hearing about already, and um, some of them I've beginning I've begin to be able to see in the world and our interactions with it and whatnot. So the this talks about how energy is energy and money works in the same play in the same way. The more you give, the more you receive, and. As long as you're staying in this place of heart-centered connection to source energy, then everything you put out will immediately be given right back to you. And from this point, we can, our, our ways, our models of living will start to transform. And we have definitely already seen this, okay? It's, oh, I'm so excited about it. So it talks about how we will learn we will begin to put more emphasis more importance more priority on our time our health our emotions all of the actual important things in the world and we'll start spending less energy on you know just working our nine to fives day in and day out just to come home and try to not let stress kill us right So we'll work less hours, which will give us more time and space to fill our own needs, as well as start searching for other things like art and inspiration and motivation in the forms of learning and helping others and just creating a good world for us all. And it's so lovely. The personal development industry will take off, which it already has in the world, and that's so exciting. well, I guess because I'm part of it and have been for a while. <laughs> we'll put more importance on nature and caring for the trees and the plants and the life that already exists, especially since we were taught in the earlier insights that nature and the beauty of it is a big fueling of this energy. And once we understand the importance of the energy and how we can harness it and work with it, we will start moving towards focusing on the outlets of energy, the the energy that's created that is released to us, like nature, which I already think we are doing. It goes on to explain how this new creation of a world, like it's um, better ways of doing things, newer ways of doing things, a whole different topsy-turvy flip over system network thing, and uh, how us creating this new world through focusing on different importances than we have in the past is going to lead us to ascension, and that's where things get crazy. And uh, I don't even know. Ascension is a whole subject in and of itself that we could spend probably two or three episodes trying to uncover, unravel, and figure out. And we still wouldn't come to anything more than just theories. There are definitely a lot of different versions out there of what Ascension may look like. Um, Pretty universally understood that it is a thing. But whereas, like... It's 
been said that, you know, that's where the Mayans went, that they ascended, and then we, le- we were just left here, and that how they are still walking around amongst us today, but in a higher dimension, so we can't perceive them, but they can perceive us, and come back if they want to, but they definitely don't want to. And that's the model that's presented to us in the book, is that you more or less just kind of phase out of this reality into the next higher dimension which is still this reality but in the next veil over the next level over and people left in this plane of existence cannot perceive that plane of existence but the more you study all of this stuff it's um quite curious because uh even though that could be possible uh we don't really know and it could also be that even though this happens we don't notice it and we keep on living our lives and even though we transitioned to ascension uh we can't really tell you know it's that whole uh, this is a deep subject and like i said we could talk about it for several episodes so i guess we'll just stop there (laughs) um maybe i'll pick back up on just ascension in and of itself in a future episode let me know if you want me to do that i know you want me to do that you don't even have to let me know we want to do that so i'll try to do that but it'll be a minute because i have another list of topics that i want to get to before we get to that one but anyway fun stuff we don't really know um but we're hopefully, maybe, possibly, theoretically, going to find out soon. Oh, anyway, moving back a little bit, taking a couple of steps back to where we are now and all of the filler that we have to get to before we can make that ascension process, right? So our priorities have shifted. We are no longer trying to work ourselves to death to meet our needs. Our needs are pretty universally met for the most part, and that allows us to take a step back and rest a little bit and start recalibrating our priorities, which are going to be focused more towards inspiration, art, generosity, compassion, building a better world for us all, and what that looks like. It even says in the book, and this book was, when, what year was this book written? 1993. So it wasn't too far off from the present day, but still pretty, I mean, 1993, that was before the internet was widespread and in your pocket. You know, we didn't have cell phones yet, so that was still pretty, pretty what's the word, um, innovative of him to suggest that mostly robots would be, we'd be automating most of our work and machines would start, machines and computers would start replacing people. But, and we see that happening now, you know, the Walmart self-checkout and they just put in a convenience store in my hometown that has its own self-checkout type thing. So everything's getting more automated and we're interacting with workers less on like the forefronts of society and whatnot. And this is terrifying to a lot of people because they don't understand all of this that we are, we've been talking about, right? Because you, it's a dime a dozen, you go out there, people are angry about the self-checkouts and the automations and, oh, they're taking our jobs. But the reality of the matter is, is that we don't have enough people to do all the jobs that we need, okay? This has been a thing that's slowly been progressing over the years. Uh, whereas people used to have like 15 kids each, uh, now they're having like two, maybe, generally speaking, of course. Nothing's universal. It is, but it's not. Anyway, moving on. Um, We don't have enough people to replace those that are aging out of the workforce, okay? And you hear people all the time like, oh, nobody wants to work. I don't know anybody that doesn't want to work. Well, it's not true. I know at least one person that doesn't want to work, but that's, <laughs> we're going to digress on that when we move forward. Um, most people, that's not the, that's not the case at all. Uh, for one, we don't have enough people. For two, people are more educated than they used to be, which means that they, you know, we listened to our elders when they told us to go to college and study and get a degree and now we've done that so we have some of the higher markets job markets are oversaturated and there's not enough jobs to go around for all of the people who spent all of this time 
learning and getting degrees and whatnot in that field and then we don't have enough people who are kind of like more on the lower level end of the workforce you know you know people are recognizing their worth and like they're putting their foot down and they're like no I went to school for this many years and I worked really hard to be able to I did all the things I was supposed to do all of the things you told me that I was supposed to do to be able to get a job in the field that I want a job in and they're putting their foot in it down and they're not budging from that and you can't blame them you know when you put in that much work and effort to um, towards a goal and then you get there and people accuse you of not wanting to work because you don't want to get you don't want to accept half the pay for a job that's not anywhere close to what you went to school for are there people who just want to move off the system sure but that's also a whole nother podcast episode that we could go go into about um, society and the problems there it's not always the fault of the individual and just remember that we're also having a lot of people lately uh, there's a homesteading wave people are choosing a lot more these days in, in just huge waves of people are choosing to cut off more or less their quote-unquote need for stuff and junk essentially that doesn't actually matter and moving to the woods and learning how to live off the land just because we recognize that that's what we should have been doing in the first place um sort of all in all we're starting to wake up to the fact that we have this technology that can do some of the work for us so let's allow it to do some of the work for us so that we can take a step back and find a simpler life that's going to lead us to fulfillment and joy and peace and rest and good health and good relationships and all of those things in life which is actually what makes life worth living we're realizing this and it's a process of change okay and it scares people because change is scary, but they don't realize that the only constant in life is change, and we are all always changing by default anyway, but we can take that and take the will and kind of direct it to the direction in which we want to change. And when all of us are educated on these types of theories, philosophies, stuffs, and we can turn our attention towards directing that change towards a positive manner for us all some really crazy amazing things can happen and i see it we're, we're doing it we're working on it just you got to keep the faith and the hope we are creating a better world for us all by focusing on what is best for us as the individual and from there you can once you fix once you approach life from your best possible standpoint you can then turn around and help those around you reach their best potential, which then turns around and helps the community to reach their potential, and so on and so forth. It grows until we finally fix everything that we have broken in the food system and the government and society and culture and dynamics and just all of the things, right? So anyway, let me know what you think about this insight as well as the rest of them and the book as a whole i would love to continue this discussion with you uh, in the facebook group let's talk about it in the facebook group uh that way we can get everybody in on it and it can be a whole community effort and whatnot until then i will see you next week I, i'm gonna leave some meditation music here at the end just so you can take a moment to relax and ponder on all of these things relax your face and shoulders deep belly breaths you're doing a great job Namaste.